your character in this movie is a character who has a lot of history with um, Barbie and it kind of impacts the person that she is. So I want to know for you, um, as America, what's your connection with Barbie and how did that kind of like impact maybe the way that you um, approached this role? Yeah, well, to be honest, like I, I didn't really play with Barbies growing up. You know, it didn't necessarily feel like representative of me, mm. but it was also just kind of, we couldn't afford bar like it just felt like out of my reach yeah, yeah. um and in a way like it's so amazing to get to be a part of a story that expands that world and that narrative to include more of us right mm -hmm. and i would have never thought that i would be a part of a barbie movie but but what greta and noah did with the story and how they opened it up to be about less about what a, the life of a doll and more about what she says about who we are as humans is re was really like compelling and interesting to me. Yes, and speaking about, you know, this crisis that Barbie, you know, happens upon in the film, I think that both Barbie and Ken are kind of the point where they're thinking like, kind of pushing back against like what they've programmed themselves. Well, I guess Mattel has programmed them right. to think, and it kind of reminds me of how it kind of like, society programs us to think certain things about ourselves, what we can do, what we can't do. Mm -hmm. Did you have a revelation like that in life before about, you know, thinking about, you know, maybe I'm not who I thought I was supposed to be? Yeah, yeah, I've a lot. And I feel like every day, like every day, more and more I'm realizing like, oh, what if I chose just not to believe that? <laughs> like, what if I just chose to believe this, you know, and and I think the the miracle of realizing that so much of what we live with is just like what we choose to believe, mm -hmm. and and that's you know that in a way it's like everything's a story. Everything we believe is a story that someone told us and that we chose to like make real for us. And and I love that you say that because that is the connection with Gloria and Barbie of like you know they they have this deep connection and one of them beginning to question like her boundaries is 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 what you know kind of they both help each other evolve to the next thing yes, they're, they're like intertwined together they're intertwined so, yes, yeah. yes well thank you so so much for thank chatting you. with me and i can't wait for more people to see the film you know coming off of films like lady bird and little women um i was listening to the podcast you did with dua lipa mm. i mean talking about how like you know the most terrifying part about this movie would be like where to start like yeah. initially so you know thinking about how we didn't really know too much about what the film was for a long time then you come out with the trailer and like oh barbie's going through an existential crisis <laughs> that's what yeah. the genesis of yeah. this film is yeah. so what do you think the starting point was when you figured out like what this film would be about and like what it would tackle and like kind of even having some social commentary in there as well yeah well i wanted the movie to be um you know i wanted it to be beautiful i wanted it to be dazzling and i wanted it to be kind of this homage to soundstage musicals of the 1950s but then I felt like the way to sort of approach everything was to run head on into the thorniness and to not uh, pretend it doesn't exist, that mm -hmm. that would be where the story was. And, and then I think beyond that, as, you know, as we were working on it, um, just I would say Ken as an idea as like uh, the fact that Ken never really, nobody who ever played with Barbies or grew up with them really ever thought about Ken. <laughs> and when I first talked to Ryan about playing the part, he said his daughter just had Barbie and he thought that they had a Ken, but he couldn't find it. And then he found it in the backyard under a rotting lemon. And he oh was my. like, oh, I need to tell this man's story. He's totally forgotten. <laughs> and I think that that also, it was like, it was like I felt that the, everything about the story kept revealing itself to us and it was like both looking at all of this stuff as an adult and also remembering being a kid and kind mm. of trying to occupy both both mental states at the same time yes yes and with that being said what do you think this film's like wide appeal could be because you know, initially you think people may say oh, barbie film like yeah that, this may be for like my kids but you know yeah. but then you watch the film and it's like okay this message is for like it's you know broad it's like universal yeah, yeah. so what do you think that the the universal message of this film would be uh, the thing that i really wanted to 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 sort of nail down uh, to, to, for people when they sit in that movie theater was 
just the, this is a big one, but it, it is honestly what I wanted it to be is just like that you're worthy and that you're enough. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something men, women, everyone, whether they're young or old, people hold themselves to just impossible standards and really beat themselves up all the time. I see it all the time. Yeah. Um, and I do it too. And I wanted this to be fun and beautiful and a romp and hilarious. And then I also wanted it to sort of reach through the screen and say, maybe you're enough. Mm -hmm. You're enough. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you know, like, I, I think that that was, that was really at the core of it to me because I think, um, it's what I need to hear, and I think I would imagine that a lot of people need to hear it. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite parts was when, like, you know, it was like, you know, if Barbie's having a rough patch, then like, what, what have I to do? With, like, I'm going through something. Yeah. So like, that's where I think that's a message that like could be applied. Yeah, to anything. exactly. Yes. So yeah, it's really supposed to be eight to eighty. Everyone's invited, or really a hundred and eight. <laughs> um, but it's 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 a movie. I want it to be for everyone, and um, and and. Ken's included. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for chatting thank with me. You. I can't wait for more people to see the film. Um, Issa, I'll start with you. When we found out that you were gonna play President Barbie, I was like, that feels correct. You know, Issa Rae playing President Barbie. If President Barbie was our real life president, who would be three real life figures who you think would be in her administration? <laughs> if, if President Barbie were real, it would probably be, um, Beyonce would be in the music ministry cabinet because that's a thing. Um, I would also invite, this is so hard. Oh, it just, mm -hmm. uh, it got real for me. Mm -hmm. I would invite, um, I would invite Greta Gerwig just because for, for treasury, because I want her to handle all of the finances because this a big hit. Um, Warner Brothers should thank her. And then I would like to also invite um, Rihanna for foreign relations. Uh -huh. I just feel like she has a superior um, quality and mm. an accent that people can relate to. I, I hate every a, answer I gave. A big, I, she has I, a big I, reach. I, I yeah, good. she has a big reach. No, that's a sack line of the other nations should be intimidated by. Thank you. <laughs> that's all I want. I want to stuck fear in my <laughs> <laughs> right. I love it, I love it. And Michael and Kate for you, um, so Michael, you play Alan, and you play a Barbie, but not necessarily the Barbies, like the other Barbies that we meet in yes. the movie. So what was it like playing these characters that are kind of different from like, you know, the different versions of Barbies and all the kins, but these two characters are very different and kind of bring a different energy than we've seen in uh -huh. the movie when we get to the point where we meet them. Uh -huh. So what was that like? Well, yeah. how do we do this? How are we gonna do? What are we gonna I, do? I like to feel like I'm watching from the periphery. Yeah. I feel sort of like that, and I like to yeah. celebrate that, and I like to try to use that platform to speak to others who feel like that. And so I, I'm so proud to have portrayed Weird Barbie. And what about you, honey? I like that too. You know, I always have lived on like the. Um, Edge of town. Mm -hmm. When I lived here in Marina uh, in LA, I lived in Marina Del Rey. You did, and I liked at the wow. end of the night, like slinking off, <laughs> on you know, the ninety, you know, and being uh -huh. on the side and being, yeah, like, yeah, I can yeah. come in when I want, yeah. but I'm over here. <laughs> did that make sense? You oh. lived in the Marina. Why am I talking about where I lived? Yeah, I lived wow. in Marina Del Rey. Yeah. Did you go to Cheesecake? Near Via Marina, of course. Cheesecake. Oh. Go to Jerry's Valley. Go to Aunt Kizzy's back porch. What I don't know if it's there anymore. It's gone. Wow. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. It's a lot of, and Jerry's is gone too. Yeah. I think. Jerry's is gone. It's all gone. Angels. <sighs> yeah. Sad. Well, thank you three so so much. <laughs> thank you. We said a lot. Of course, yeah. and I cannot wait for more people to see this film. So I wanted to know, um, for both of you, thinking about kind of what Barbie and Ken are both going to do this movie. They kind of have are pushing back against like what they've been programmed as I guess like via Mattel in this movie, you know, the things that people expect of them or what they expect of themselves. And I was wondering, in real life, do you think there have been any instances where you kind of like push back against like kind of how what society the has like box programmed you have, us? Society has put you in yeah. or you've put yourself yeah. in? Yeah. Yes, this movie is very much about stepping outside of that box. Metaphorically, yeah. figuratively. Um, an instance where I've had that experience, mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of like, there's there's not one shining example, but um, yeah, I think I've always been doing that. I remember I'm from the Gold Coast in Australia and I feel like 
being like a surfy kid was yeah. like such a thing that you had to be. So I dyed my hair black like all through high school and, and listened to death metal. And I was like, was I just <laughs> trying to prove, even though I really like surfing, am I trying to prove that I'm not the thing that, I don't know, yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess I've always been finding ways to like defy the expectation, either in big or small ways. And sometimes it's totally silly. Like my hair looked awful. I should have just been like, it's okay. It's like blonde hair, it's okay. Um, but no, I, I, I think, I don't know. I think I've always had that feeling of like, hmm, they think I'm that. Now I've got to show them I'm not that. And sometimes I catch myself doing it with like acting roles. I'm like, no, I've already played that. I need to show that I can play that. And I'm like, it's all about that box, like getting out of that box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you? What about you? <laughs> <laughs> you, sir. You know, I think that, you know, as journalists, you know, we think that, like, a lot of times opinions need to be uniform. Mm. And, you know, thinking about how everybody can take something away differently from a movie. Even this film. Like, you know, the existential crisis can resonate with me more than someone else. So I think that's how I would, I would push outside of that box. Mm -hmm. I'd find it really hard, I mean, I don't know, I'm not a journalist, but it'd be so hard because I feel um, there's so many things that I feel both sides of the argument for and it's like you have to pick the it's side hard, and it's kind of like, but both things can be true at once. Yeah, it's I, like you always don't want to be polarizing. You don't want to like, either, yeah. either you really, really like a film or you really, really like yeah. it. It's never like a lot of times in between. Yeah. So I like pushing back against that. Well. Yeah, mm -hmm. playing in that gray area, it's just, yeah, anyways, interesting. Yeah. And I think that's what Greta does so well, you know, is that she really, there's no, there's no line between drama and comedy, you know, mm -hmm. she sort of breaks that down and the stuff that she makes kind of exists in that place and that's why it's so, it resonates so much, certainly with me, you know, because it feels more, like, truthful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you both so, so much for chatting with me and I cannot wait for more people to see this film.